The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How are you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the front of my I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 now your hosts nico dehan and paige clark welcome to living a primal lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world to recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms good morning i'm nico dehan and it's a beautiful morning in downtown st petersburg it is exactly 64 degrees and cloudy uh, going to uh, be partly cloudy later on and probably a little sunshine maybe later on in the day, high of about 72. So it's a beautiful day and it's a uh, beautiful week. And uh, weather's been really nice down here, so come on down and visit us. I'd like to remind you, first of all, to please pick up uh, the Health Signals newsletter and the, uh, let me get to services here. So you hit services. You go all the way down to the bottom of the page, you'll see the Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder. It's all there to make you healthy. There's a nice shot already right there for you. And the Health Signals newsletter, please pick that up. And I have a newsletter that's out this morning. And number seven starts out with uh, the deadliest hab habits you should avoid as you get older. A lot of good information. And, in fact, I just got a text message from one of my uh, subscribers that said, great, great uh, newsletter. So thank you very much. So, first thing I want to go, oh, Paige, of course, is not here, folks. Um, she, hopefully, she'll be back in the next week or so. I haven't talked to her in the last week. Just uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. But I'm going to give her a call right after the show. See how she's doing and see if she's getting around a little bit better. And if she does, you're going to see her next week or maybe the week after. Hopefully, that's the case. I'm tired of being alone here. But I thank you for uh, joining us. Now, the first article I want to go over is this uh, disclosure. This says BE disclosure, and BE means bioengineering. So I guess they didn't want to put that right up front here. And this is the USDA uh, website here for the United States uh, Department of Agriculture. And the uh, United States Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue, announced the National Bioengineering Ford food disclosure standard on December 20th of 2018. The National Bioengineering Food Disclosure Law passed by Congress in July of 2016 directed the uh, USDA to establish this national mandatory standard for disclosing foods that are or may be bioengineered. Now, the standard uh, defines bioengineered foods as those that contain detectable genetic material that has been modified through certain lab techniques and cannot be created through conventional breeding or found in nature. Now, the implementation date uh, of this standard is January 1, 2020, except for small food manufacturers whose date is uh, 2021, January 1st. The mandatory compliance date is January 1 of 2022, and regulated uh, entities may volunteer to comply with this uh, right now if they wanted to. The Agriculture Marketing Service, the AMS, developed a list of bioengineered foods to identify the crops or foods that are available in a bioengineering form throughout the world and for which regulated entities must maintain records. These records will inform regulated entities about whether they must make a bioengineering food disclosure. The standard requires the manufacturers, importers, and certain retailers to ensure bioengineering foods are appropriately disclosed. So right now, what this is telling me, that uh, they're not being disclosed now. So that's probably not good. And I think disclosure is where it's at uh, with the food for sure. But you'll see here that uh, this next article, if I can find it here, talks about the restaurant business. And a lot of times we see these types of food entering 
the restaurant business without us even knowing it. So somewhere in the Midwest, the restaurant is frying foods with oil made from gene-edited soybeans. That's according to the company making the oil, which says it's the first commercial use of the gene-edited food in the U.S. Uh, they can't reveal its first customer for competitive reasons, but the CEO says the oil is in use and being eaten right now. <clears throat> the Minnesota-based company is hoping the announcement will encourage the food industry interest in the oil, which says it has no trans uh, trance in it, no, has a longer shelf life than other soybean oils. Uh, whether demand builds remains to be seen, but the oil's transition into the food supplies signals gene editing's potential to alter foods without the controversial uh, of the uh, GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. Among other gene-edited uh, crops being uh, explored are mushrooms that don't brown, uh, wheat with more fiber, better producing tomatoes, herbicide tolerant canola, and rice that don't absorb soil pollutants as they grow. And that, of course, means that they can put more herbicides on this. So they're going to be spraying this with herbicides and pesticides. So all this food that is being uh, genetically engineered, they're doing it for an, a reason of making it easier for them to grow these things and to deal with the pests. Because remember, when you're making a huge field of one thing, the pests see that as, here's dinner or breakfast or whatever. Uh, and this is why we have these plagues, because of agriculture. And in nature, we don't normally see this because plants are more diversified. They grow uh, with each other. And a lot of times, they'll be complemented with a food uh, or with a type of plant that is uh, kind of a good pal to have around. Maybe this other plant that's next to you, the insects don't like, so they don't go to you either. Or maybe there's an irritant on that plant that, that the animals are not going to come and eat you. So there's a lot of things in nature that it does it naturally. Here we're trying to do it unnaturally uh, because we think we're smarter than nature, perhaps. But this is all done, of course, for the grower, for the producer, not for us being healthier. That's the way I see it. Uh, unlike conventional GMOs, which are made by injecting DNA from other organisms, gene editing lets scientists alter traits by snipping out or adding specific genes in a lab. Startups include, uh, including this company, say their crops uh, do not qualify it as GMOs because what they're doing is th theoretically be achieved with traditional crossbreeding, but it's not being done by traditional crossbreeding. Traditional crossbreeding is what we've always done. This is why the tulips in Holland are so great. This is why marijuana strains get their potency, is because we do this. But we're entering a whole new realm, and we really don't know when we take something away from a plant or even, let's say, an animal, which is probably the next step that we don't know the consequences down the road because we're not that smart. We know this. Is this the only thing this one little thing does? Or are there multiple things that we don't know about yet? And this is the problem when we start altering something that we're ingesting to sustain life, folks. This is not the way it should be. So when we get back, we're going to continue this, and I'm going to show you some examples of this also. So stick around. In the meantime, please pick up our Health Signals newsletter and, of course, our One Shot Wonder of the Primal Edge. And I'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. C call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And welcome back to the show. So we're talking about this company, and the company's name is uh, Silect, uh, and, uh, or Cal Calyx, C-A-L-Y-X-T. Makes it kind of hard to pronounce for me. Uh, so the regulators, uh, regulators have agreed and said that several gene editing crops in development do not require special oversight. It's partly why companies see this big potential for gene edited crops. So that's different than uh, the other types of crops that we see that are GMOs. Uh, They've been spurred on by the regula uh, regulatory decisions by this administration, they said. By giving the many ways gene editing can be done, uh, regulators should consider the potential implications of each new crop. He cited an example uh, of produced uh, gene editing not to brown the mushrooms. He says you designed it to sit around longer. Are there any problems with, it, with that? And that's some of the questions we, they have to answer. Already, most corn and soy grown in the United States are herbicide-tolerant GMOs. Just like last week, regulators cleared a huge hurdle for salmon genetically modified to grow faster. The fish is the first genetic modified animal approved uh, for human consumption in the United States. This was done a couple of years ago in Canada. Now we've approved this. Uh, though regulators say GMOs are safe, health and environmental worries have persisted and the companies will soon have to disclose when the products have been bioengineered ingredients in them. Uh, the, uh, the company says that its oil does not qualify as a GMO. The oil is made from soybeans with two inactive genes to produce a more heart healthy fats and no trans fat. The company says the oil also has a longer shelf life. Of course, that's the r number one reason I would think, which can reduce costs for food makers and resulting in long lasting pro uh, products. Uh, and of course, uh, more profits. This is the uh, incentive that we always have. We have to have that more profits for our stockholders. Now we already know that soybean oil is not a good uh, oil to use. It's uh, always been genetically modified. Now it's going to be ge genetically engineered, bioengineered also, or maybe one or the other. We don't know, but uh, soybean oil is not that great to begin with. So I would recommend stay, staying with the animal fats like saturated fat uh, and the fish fats, the omega-3s, uh, staying with really good quality olive oil. Uh, there's a lot of good oils like avocado oil. Now, just remember that in the oils, the ones that are 
easiest for us to deal with, to digest, are the animal ones, because after all, we are animals. And the next ones are the plants. Now, the plant oils uh, take an extra step for us to digest them, so it's a little bit harder. But they're very healthy for them, and they can contain other things that the animal oils don't. So we need both of these things. So uh, they're working on other gene editing crops that uh, say are faster to develop than the conventional GMOs which require regulatory studies. So these do not even have the studies up front. Um, they say oversight of gene edited foods could become stricter if the public attitude changes. So it's our attitude that has to change first, not theirs. In other words, they're going to put this stuff out there because they think it's okay because the profit is good, because it can last longer. It's really good for them. So they're making the decision ahead of time. This is good. We don't need oversight. But if you pressure us, maybe we'll include some. Maybe we'll have to. This is not the way things should be done. You should never think of regulation as settled, he says. Uh, views on gene spicing vary, too. The National Organic Standards Board says food made with gene editing cannot qualify as organic. And last year, Europeans' highest court said gene editing in foods should be subjected to the same rules as uh, conventional GMOs. So there you have it. Now there's another type of engineering that all is also going on, and that is known as CRISPR. In Japanese, uh, edit crop rules suggesting gene edited foods could hit the stores in 2019. An expert panel of Health Ministry finalized a report on creating rules for a geome editing agriculture and marine products on May 18th of this year, I guess, meaning they could be on the market within, moon, uh, within months. Under the rules, businesses will be able to sell the GMO edited products after registering with the government. They will not, this will not involve safety screenings for toxicity or uh, carcinogenicity. So more stuff is coming. Now there's another thing here that I wanted to go over. Let's see. The rise of genetically modified foods. Now the reason I picked this up, and this is from the Washington Post, is because it had some nice charts in it. Always commercials, always dealing with commercials, no matter where we are. So the newest issue of Nature has a thoughtful package of articles taking a careful look at the rise of genetically modified crops around the world. It's definitely worth a read, anybody interested on the subject. This chart, for instance, let's get it up here, shows the uh, transgenic crop planting is dominated by just five countries, the United States, Brazil, Argentina, Canada, and India. And as it happens, there's been a real slowdown over the past five years. Meanwhile, just four crops, soybeans, corn, cotton, and canola, account for nearly all GM crops grown in 2012. And the most popular modifications include herbicide, tolerance and insect resistance for a handful of crops. Another chart here. There's more in the uh, nature issue than just a few charts. Uh, take a look at the research on GMOs and there's a whole bunch of different. So what this chart says here apparently that soybeans 81 percent are biotech and only a 20% margin of these are the normal types of beans that are grown here. Uh, cotton, 81% of it. Well, of course, we don't eat cotton. Of course, there is cottonseed oil, which used to be uh, a replacement. Remember Crisco, that was lard. They replaced the lard. But, and here we have maize, which is corn, of course, and that's about 35% of it biotech and the other is conventional. When they say conventional, I'm not sure. Are they including GMOs in this? Because most of the corn in the United States is GMO, and canola here is 34%. And you can see the rise in this other chart here uh, since 1966 till they have this 2012. So the red here is the herbicide to uh, intolerance, or the to tolerance. The insect tolerance is this opaque line and the black line is herbicide tolerance and insect resistance. 
So here's some facts for you. GMO crops have bred super weeds. That's true. GM cotton has driven farmers to suicide. That's false. And transgene spread to wild crops in Mexico, and they say that's unknown. Well, I know for a fact that that's happened here. And, of course, Monsanto has been behind this, that uh, if you have some crops that are GMO and say uh, the wind blows and it blows some of the seeds over into your crops. Now you have the crops from Monsanto and they consider that a violation. And if they catch you with those crops, even though you didn't get them, the wind just did it, you're still in violation. So. Stick around, folks. I'll be back in a few minutes. Uh, I'd like to remind you, please pick up our One Shot Wonder, our Primal Edge, and also the Health Signals for Slacker. And I'll be right back. like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Thanks for sticking around, folks. Uh, I'm reading from this article in the Washington Post, and uh, three uh, British scientists argue that the debate over the use of GMOs in developed countries would be much more productive if it moved beyond the wild claims like the GMO crops will destroy everything or GMO will fix all our agricultural problems. 
it's going to do neither one of those probably. Uh, genetic engineering is not an essential, even useful for all crop improvement, but in some cases it helps to improve yields and nutritional value and reduces the risks and costs, they say, associated with the overuse of fertilizers, pesticides, and water. See, we need to use these uh, herbicides and pesticides and water because our soil is bad. Uh, and it's getting worse because of our fa farming pro uh, practices. So instead of improving our soil the way the Amazonians did thousands and thousands of years ago by a method we still don't know, but we do have good methods, and uh, we need to use those. So instead of doing that, they're altering the food, which I say is probably not good for us. Um, there's another uh, nature's editor pointed out that GMOs haven't delivered yet on many of the wonderful social and environmental benefits that they promised years ago. It's partly because so much research has been confined in the private sector. Gene modification is a uh, nascent technology for which development has moved very quickly to commercialize. Uh, the, that has forced most research into the for-profit sector. Without broader research programs outside the seed industry, development will be continued to be profit-driven, uh, limited the chance for many of the advancements that were promised years ago, such as the feeding the planets. Uh, you know, we're going to feed everybody because of this be beautiful thing. Now, there's another thing here that is the basic primer I wanted to kind of go into a little bit. And what they're talking about here, in California, they, in uh, 2012, they were talking about this pretty heavily. And there's some interesting facts here. And there's some of the questions, how do you geneti genetically modify food? Well, farmers have been selectively breeding crops for tens of thousands of years in order to produce desirable genetic traits. But so that's not what's at issue here. Since the 1990s, scientists have been able to manipulate the genomes of crops directly. This might involve things like taking a few well categorized genes from a different species, say a bacteria of some kind, and transplanting them into a crop, say corn, to produce the desired traits. This is quite different from traditional plant breeding, and that's what's causing all the controversy. Another question, what would a, why would anyone manipulate genes like that? Well, for a variety of reasons. Some crops are modified to be resistant to herbicide, such as Monsanto's Roundup Ready soybeans, so that they're easier to spray the, fe uh, the fields with a weed killer. Yeah, you can just broad, you know, before you'd go out and take the weeds out. That's the way you would normally do that. Um, let's see. Uh, Another question, so there's no one single type of genetically modified food? That's right. Simply stated that a food is genetically modified doesn't tell you very much. Genetic modification is a tool that can be used for many purposes. In practices, uh, they tend to focus their research on efforts of making crops more profitable rather than making foods more nutrition or boosting the yield to solve wo world hunger. Uh, another question, how prevalent are GMO foods? Well, more than 88% of corn and soy planted in the United States is genetically modified in some way. Most of it ends up in animal feed or ethanol or corn syrup, which uh, turns into a lot of these uh, processed foods that we have. Cotton, sugar beets, and canola are also commonly genetically modified crops. By some estimates, 40 to 70% of foods in the grocery stores in California contain some kind of GMO ingredient. Another question, are GMO foods safe or health-wise? Well, so far there's been very little scientific evidence that they're harmful. At this point, billions of people around the world have been eating GMO crops for decades, and numerous of scientific bodies have concluded that genetically modified crops pose no health risk uh, other than conventional uh, or any more than the uh, conventional crops. As the uh, American Association for Advancement of Science puts it in its recent statement, the science is quite clear. Crop improvement by modern molecular techniques of biotechnology is safe. Hmm. Some scientists, however, do not uh, do insist that more research needs to be done before GMO foods can be so definitely considered safe. Yeah, like before we put it into the food. Uh, in a sense to the AAAS statement, 21 researchers argue that the U.S. testing of genetically modified foods is still voluntary and that things like increasing herbicide use, which can occur in th with things like Roundup Ready crops, may have health effects that we don't yet know. 
So they say, why not label and let the customers make up their own mind? And that's what this is all about. It's not that we're going to take these crops out of here, which I would like to do, but we're talking about just labeling, and this has been a fight since 2012. Uh, there are some legitimate concerns. For instance, farmers are uh, planting herbicide-resistant GM tend to use a limited range of herbicides on their fields, which has given rise to a variety of herbicide-resistant super weeds. <clears throat> that, in turn, leads to search for more herbicides, what critics call a chemical treadmill. And this is what happens. That's the risk that genetically engineered uh, traits can escape into nature. Well, that's the other thing, too, doesn't it? Uh, just because it can go into the next crop next door also means, I think, that it could blow into the wild areas. And now we have these things affecting our wild plants, where the real treasure is, and the wild animals, whatever we have left. So what would California's law actually do? So this uh, law would require a subset of genetically modified foods sold in supermarkets to be labeled as such. Retailers would have uh, to provide extensive documentation for foods that purport to have GM to be GMO free. Farmers and food manufacturers might, might also have to provide records in some cases. There are plenty of loopholes. The law would exempt many foods, such as meat from animals that are fed GMO uh, crops or fed animals. Um, restaurants are also exempt. What's more, many biotech companies are now experimenting with new techniques, such as engineering specific proteins that uh, do not meet the standard definition of genetically modified foods. And that's what we were talking about earlier with that gene editing. Um, uh, what have past GMO label, labeling laws accomplished? Studies of labeling laws in the Netherlands and China found they did not af <coughs> appear to affect com com uh, consumer behavior. One possible reason is that the labeling laws make GMO foods more expensive to produce. After all, retailers and manufacturers have to provide extensive documentation to pr prove food is not genetically modified. So according to a paper by the International Food Policy Research Institute, mandatory label laws aren't likely to affect the supply of the GMO foods much. So. <clears throat> this is the thing we're in. We're fighting to get uh, at least some kind of labeling on our food so we can actually make a decision what we're going to be eating or not. And it's becoming more and more difficulty. And as we've seen through these articles that uh, the real reason for this is not our health. It's not for that we're going to get the superfood. It's the profitability of these companies. They need more profit. Uh, you know, making 50% more profit, 60% more profit, not good enough. We need to squeeze every dime out of everybody. That's the way it seems to me. I'll be right back, folks. Stick around. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, 
the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv for the latest market information and welcome back i'm going to touch on this article from nature talking about transgenic uh animals in agriculture and uh Animal biotechnology has been practiced in one form or another since the beginning of the domestication of animals. Many of the previously used tools of animal breeding, genetics and nutrition, have played uh, use of tools, genetics and nutrition have played and will continue to play an important role in the selection, propagation, and management of desirable and e economically important characteristics in livestock. Stock. In the future, livestock production will rely even more heavily on existing and emerging biotechnical advances to produce food. Yet improvements still need to are needed in the product composition and production efficiency, especially in growth, uh, disease resistance, and reproduction. Genetically modified or transgenic livestock, st stem cells, and other emerging biotechnologies will be, have important roles in producing more and higher quality food derived from livestock. The production of transgenic animals is one such biotechnological tool. A transgenic animal is one that has been integrated a has integrated a gene or a DNA sequence which has been transferred by human intervention into the GMO of a cell. For the purposes of discussion, this is defined as uh, blah, blah, blah. The production of gen uh, transgenics provides methods to rapidly introduce new and modified genes and DNA sequences into livestock without crossbreeding or hybridization. It is a uh, more precise technique, but not fundamentally different from uh, the methods used to produce trans, uh, uh, you know, the, the way we do crossbreeding now. They say it's not a lot different. Much has been written about this. Um, the obvious question is why genetically modify livestock? The answer is not so straightforward. Some of the reasons are to study genetic control of or the physiological systems. Number two, to build genetically disease models and improve animal production traits and produce new animal products. And they have various different methods for this. Uh, pronuclear injection, sperm-mediated DNA transfers, uh, embryonic stem cells, germ cell transportation, nuclear transportation cloning. Uh, so there's a lot of different methods. Uh, there are many potential applications of this uh, to develop new and improved strains of livestock. Practical applications of transgenetic in livestock production include enhanced proficiency and reproduction performance, increasing food utilization and grow rates, and, uh, improved carcass composition, improved milk production, modify of uh, the hair or the fiber, increasing uh, the disease resistance. 
And I think we have some pictures here of different animals. And they want to, of course, enhance the nutrition. Human health is directly affected by the necessity of sustainable and secure supply of healthful food. And if this is true, if we're really concerned about uh, the health of the food, why would we skimp on the food we give the animals? We're always looking to, you know, the food grade for us is different than for animals. If we're going to be eating that animal, don't we want them to have the best food there is? It just, just, just makes no sense at all to me. They also want to uh, reduce the environmental impact. Of course, the environmental impact is caused by the raising and domestication of animals in the first place. When you start corralling things, bad thing happens. They don't roam like they normally roam, so the spirit of the animal is gone. Uh, they don't have access to the best grasses that, that they like to eat, so they're eating something that you give them, and they have to rely on you to make sure. You know, the animal really knows out in the wild what to eat and what to look for and when to eat what. It instinctively knows this, yet we corral these animals, and now we, they, we think we know better than nature. It's ridiculous. We have to stop doing this. We have to actually return animals to the wild. This is my vision. You know, let's get more and more wild animals out there instead of less and less. Our living situation causes the death of so many wild animals. It's ridiculous. I heard a horticulturist one time, he was explaining how sensitive the ground was and how sensitive animals are, that if you take a thousand acres of land and you put a road down the middle of it, half the animals die just because that road is there, because because their territory is infringed upon. It changes their habits, of course, we see uh, on the side of the road a lot of roadkill and things like that, but that's just one thing that happens. Psychologically, we've changed their environment, so now it's more reluctant, than, uh, reluctant for them to cross a road. They're out in the... Uh, and they're exposing themselves unnecessarily, where in an open meadow they may... they have the ability to go around that thing, or maybe they have different reasons for going out in the meadow. There's so many things we don't know about this, but we know that our ancient ancestors loved the spirit of the animal. The spirit of the animal comes from its own decision to make, to, to have what food it wants, to seek out that food, to seek out the mate, to run around, to have joy in life. Uh, I don't care how big the prison is, it's still a prison when you lock things up. If you lock a human being up, it does certain uh, things to it that changes that human being. It does the same thing to animals. Now we've domesticated quite a few, few animals as pets and things like dogs, dogs and cats and things like that, and, and horses. And there's a lot of abuse going on in that stuff. But this is, I'm not talking about that type of thing. I'm strictly, strictly talking about food because I think uh, some of the domestication of animals that we consider companions is not as bad as it is if uh, you're going to, after the food. Uh, we still change them too. You know, how many breeds of dogs do we have? And every year we add to this, so we're we're changing them. But but most of that thing I, th I think is done with just the crossbreeding of different uh, uh, breeds or different uh, samples of breeds. I guess it is. But uh, you know, this stuff makes me sick. It's, it talk, talks a lot about here. This is an exclusive uh, interview uh, and uh, article that goes very deep into this genetically modified food and specifically animals. So I'm going to throw this into the next uh, Health Signals newsletter. But it really talks about all the different pitfalls, improving production, uh, improving the hair and the fiber of the animals, pitfalls and risks they talk about in this, and they actually come up with some conclusions. Uh, that uh, the applications of biotech in livestock production are endless. So we really have to set up some ground rules and how this is going to be done if we want to keep, keep continuing this. And in the end, my question is the original uh, domestic animals that we have, are they going to be here at all? Is there a wild version of this animal somewhere? We know in pigs there's hogs. Uh, in cattle, it's, uh, is there a wild cattle? Yeah, there's steers, things like this. But we have a lot of domesticated animals that we don't have really a, a, uh, a, a, a similar one in the wild, let's say. Anyway, that's just my thought about it.
So when we get back, I want to talk about a little about working uh, longer as we age. Uh, this is something that I'm doing right now. I'll be 75 this year and uh, continue to work for a few more years, enjoying it, enjoying the income too. And uh, we'll discuss that when we come back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then and head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. And welcome back to the show. Uh, article here, want to work well into your retirement? Try marijuana. Isn't this a, uh, <laughs> I mean, this is completely opposite. Uh, it's funny how history is. Back in the 60s, you know, when the marijuana started being used heavily during the, uh, that time when rock and roll was just being born and stuff and where they demonized it so much uh, you're going to be lazy you're going to do this you're not going to be productive in life and it's just uh, turned around so differently a new study published in the spring issue of the journal of policy analysis and management finds that the passage of medical marijuana laws seems to help reduce pain levels and increase the number of hours worked by older adults Three uh, principal findings emerge from this. First, that the active state medical marijuana laws leads to lower pain and better self-assessed health among older adults. Second, that the state marijuana laws lead to increases uh, in older adult labor supply. And third, that the effects of medical marijuana laws are the largest among older adults with health conditions that would qualify for legal medical marijuana use under the current laws. 
The results were significant among those uh, who, because of a health issue, would qualify for medical marijuana in their state. The researchers found that 4.8 decrease in pain and 6.6% increase in reported good and excellent health. They also found that a 7.3 increase in levels of full-time work among people who qualified for medical marijuana. And this is not even talking about the people who use it recreationally without the, the laws and everything like that, because marijuana has been a high uh, output uh, use in America for a long, long time among a lot of people. And now we actually have probably hundreds of thousands of people who have been smoking it for 50 years or more. And we could actually probably do some nice testing on those, you know, just normal type of testing where we ask questions about some of these people, what type of health concerns have they had. You've been smoking for 50 years, you haven't been smoking cigarettes, but you're smoking marijuana, and what's the conclusion here? So a lot of different conclusions we can come to from these things, but I'm seeing more and more people using the CBDs, more and more people using marijuana in their older age, and more and more people being very happy about it too. So I think that's probably a good thing. Thanks for sticking around, folks, and we'll see if Paige is back next week. But if not, I'll be here, and uh, thanks for sticking around. Bye-bye.